Welcome back. Time to talk markets. Connor Bridgman of agmarket.net as well as Tommy Grisafi with Nesvik Trading and Ag Bull Media. All right, Connor, let's start off by talking about Tuesday's crop production report. It produced several surprises, but let's start with corn. What was the bigger shock, do you think, for the market? The unprecedented increase in corn yield or the 2.1 million acreage jump in planted acreage this year? Just unbelievable. Unreal. What a hit. Um, to me, right, that, that was a big yield estimate. But we saw some uh, some estimates come in at that 188, 189 number, right? It was at the top end of the range, but uh, maybe not expected, right? Um, but then looking, who expected to add two, two and a half million acres to this number? So not only did we have 95 million acres, right? And then we got a record yield on top of it. So to me, uh, the curveball for me was easily adding that two million acres on top of that record yield. Yeah, Tommy, what do you think? I mean, why did the market react so harshly to this report? Do you agree? You think it was the acreage? It's a combination of how people were set up. There's some people who fundamentally are really, really, really bearish beans. And when you take away a few million acres, and we know this crop is not made yet in beans. Corn, it's a little easier to say it's almost made. It's not made yet also. But uh, taking away acres from beans, adding them to the corn, Tying this traded like a like a springtime acreage report. This traded like the report we're supposed to be nervous about spring acres at the end of March. This is not typical for an August report. Usually all the commodities will be bearish or all of them will be a little bullish or neutral. So to take beans pre-report down 15, up 20, that comes after the up 25 cent day from the Trump tweet suggesting that China should be buying our beans. And uh, nonetheless, people were just caught out of position on this one time. Yeah, and we'll get into beans here in just a second. But before we do that, Connor, historically, I mean, when you look at this many acres out there this year for corn, we knew there was a lot. We saw some of these high yield estimates even before the report. But historically, with this many acres, does yield drop off with acreage that is that high? Yeah, I mean, a 188, right? The previous record was last year at a 179. The USDA told us for the past you know, from this time last year all the way to January, we had a 183, 184. Then they dropped it four bushel in January. And so um, I got to think, right, could we see the yield drop 10 bushel? Um, it's certainly possible, right? We've seen crazier things, but I got to think we'll see um, some form of record, right? So not only are we above trend, we are well above trend. And so to see it uh, on top of these big acres, right? And uh, on that August report, we got to look at where were the acres added? Vast majority of that two and a half million acres was added west of the Mississippi, right? Kansas added uh, close to 500,000 acres alone. And so um, can we hold this record yield? God forbid, can it get bigger? Right. Um, it feels like a tall order, especially where I'm at in central Illinois, where you start hearing some of these yield checks. It's going to be interesting to see, um, you know, especially come Monday when the pro farmer tour starts. Uh, what's it going to look like when we get out in the fields? I'm, I'm going to be paying close attention to that. Yeah. And an important note when, you know, pro farmer crop tour coming, pay attention to how it compares to historical averages of pro farmer crop tour. That's really the data uh, that analysts say we need to be watching. But Tommy, when you look at right now, old crop and new crop for corn, farmers are struggling with what to do with prices at these levels. What is your advice at this point? You know, they're going to have to make a decision. They're going to have to manage their space. The, the days of these people having services that give cash advice, they didn't give the cash advice. They didn't have a plan for if we went down. The plan was when we rally, when we get to your cost production, that didn't happen. This is like having someone who's elderly, who's sick. You now need to go to triage and treat this patient time. All right. Well, Tommy, you mentioned the surprise in soybeans and how it was a little bullish. We're going to get into soybeans. What should you do with new crop at prices where they are today? That's going to happen next. U.S. Farm Report is brought to you by the five-year anniversary of Bravant Seeds. Here's to five years of not just winning, but collecting one game-changing W after another. See all our wins at bravant.com slash W.